Hi, I'm Tracy Spicer and I'm extremely proud to be an ambassador for the Cancer Council New South Wales. I know what it's like to be affected by pancreatic cancer. In 1999, my mum Marcia was diagnosed with the disease. By the time she found that lump in her neck, the cancer had spread right throughout her body. The next seven months were an incredibly steep learning curve for our entire family, even down to learning what to cook mum for dinner. After a brave battle, mum passed away on the 25th of October of that year, 1999. These days, thankfully, there's so much more information and support available, thanks to the Cancer Council and the New South Wales Pancreatic Cancer Network. We hope this DVD answers some of the many questions you must have. A pancreatic cancer diagnosis is quite overwhelming, so don't feel obliged to watch it all at once. Feel free to just watch the modules that relate to your part of the journey. We want you to know that there are people out there who want to help you, and you are not alone. My surgery was on the 14th of September 2005, my new birthday, and it's three and a half years last Saturday, the 14th of March, that I was operated on and I'm still here and I still plan on being here. When I was first diagnosed, nobody knew anything about can pancreatic cancer. And when I mentioned it, people just like shut up because they they, they know that it's, it's such a dreadful disease and they don't want to talk about it. And, and when I asked the nurses in the hospital, they said, oh, it's not a glamorous cancer. And I thought, cancer isn't glamorous. Um, I was diagnosed with cancer three years ago um, in the pancreas, which metastasized the liver. Um, but now I'm uh, feeling fantastic and great and um, uh, dealing with everything that comes my way. I must say that I must be one of the luckiest people to have got through this whole procedure. Um, having been diagnosed once and then two years later having had a recurrence and then having further, th further surgery with um, radiation therapy and chemotherapy after the second surgery and to have come out of all of that and, and resumed normal lifestyle, back at work, um, able to do almost anything that I did previously, lost a bit of weight which didn't uh, do me any harm at all uh, and I have a, an entirely different outlook on life following that whole experience. I was diagnosed 11 years ago with pancreatic cancer, I was 36 at the time so I was relatively young but now I'm able to still do so many things that I didn't think that I would be able to do. Well I was working full time, I'm a, um, a counsellor and I had led a very busy life. I was a bit of a human dynamo. I you know, had problems taking holidays and slowing down and it's changed my life completely. Oh, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer coming up on two years and I think it's found the way most people find it, sort of ambient, not specific indigestion. You finally go to a doctor, you go and get a scan and then all of a sudden something is seriously, seriously wrong, which is what happened to us. And I think what we all went and did was some of us were very quiet about it. Dad didn't ask a lot of questions. And then I made the decision that I wanted to get some more information and I made the fatal mistake of going to look at internet stats, which is not a good idea to do because they're, they're just a figure and they mean nothing and they don't factor in people and stages and treatment and all the rest. I would say don't go to the internet at all. <laughs> I, think, I think sometimes if you're a lay person, I think it could be more confronting. Um, you can find out anything on the internet, but you've got to remember everybody is different and these, this disease affects everybody in a different way. I mean, some people go in six weeks, Barry's been nearly two years, so you can't say what's right for one will be right for the other. When mum was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, we tried to find information from various sources and there was just nothing to be found. It was, it was really disappointing and, um, and you feel very alone because there's nobody you can talk to. 
about it. Nobody you can ask questions of, nobody you can talk to who's had the disease and see how you might be able to live with it and cope with it. I mean, Mum lived with it and coped with it very well. She was very strong and very brave, but um, she had to do it all on her own, really, with her family. I was told to go home after 10 days and I did not have much support and did not ex know exactly where to go and what to do after that until I walked into the Cancer Council office and I saw a lot of brochures on people with cancer. You know, for someone like me, I've always been so independent and, and to have this, um, this knowledge was just absolutely amazing. And it was just great to know that, you know, you're not alone and there's support out there if you really need it.